Welcome to the mathematics class of Mr. Larry Whittington. Stay tuned as Mr. Whit get on here today and speak to us about fractions. I hope you figure to understand what he gonna teach. Get your ink pen and your pencil out your calculator and get ready to learn something from Mr. Whittington, Fort Bend Tutoring. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Whit with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's lesson is gonna be about multiplying fractions. That's right. Let's take a look at it. Well, there are several strategies out there on how to multiply fractions, ladies and gentlemen, but my preference is to always simplify before you multiply. And once you've done all the simplification that you can, all the reducing that you can do, you're going to simply multiply straight across. So the first thing I'm going to look for in every problem where I'm multiplying is, first of all, make sure that I have two fractions. Yeah, and I do. So this is one-fourth times three-sevenths here. The second thing I'm checking for is to see See if any of the numerators can simplify with any of the denominators. In other words, does 3 have anything in common with 7 or 4 that can be reduced? Well, in this case, no, it can't. And of course, 1 is already simplified. So in this case, we'll simply multiply straight across. That's right. So 1 times 3 is going to give me 3. And 4 times 7 is 28. And that's it. I'm done. Yeah, I'm going to put a red box around this answer here. I'm putting a red box around that answer there. Yeah. That's number one. One-fourth times three-sevenths is three-twenty-eighths. You multiply straight across, and that's it. Let's check out the next problem. Here in problem number two, I have one-sixth times twelve-fifteenths. So the first thing I'm looking for is the fact that they are both fractions. They are multiplying, and the next thing I'm checking for is to see if any of the numbers in the numerator can be simplified with a number in the denominator. In this case, I can do just that. I can simplify because 6 will go evenly into 12, and I could have also simplified the 12 into 15 by 3. So let's go with the 6 and the 12, shall we? We'll say that 6 goes into itself once, and 6 goes into 12 twice. That's right. My preference is to simplify before I multiply because I prefer small numbers. I don't want to have to deal with large numbers when it comes to simplifying, so I simplify before I multiply. All right? So, now it's time to multiply straight across. 1 times 2 is 2, and then 1 times 15 is 15, and I'm done. And that's it. 1 6 times 12 fifteenths is 2 fifteenths. Done. All right, well, let's keep it going, ladies and gentlemen. I have more problems to show you. In problem number 3, we have 4 6 times 3 eighths. So notice that in this case, that I'm showing you a different way that they can show you how to multiply. In this case, they're using parentheses. It still means to multiply your fractions together here. So once again, I'm looking to simplify before I multiply. And I notice that the 4 and the 8 both can be divided by 4. I'm always looking for that largest value to divide by when I'm trying to reduce my fractions. So 4 and 8 can both be divided by 4. So 4 goes into itself once, 4 goes into 8 twice. I can also simplify the 3 and the 6. 3 goes into itself once, and 3 goes into 6 twice. And from here, I'm going to multiply straight across. So this gives me 1 times 1, which is 1, and then 2 times 2 is 4, and that's the answer. I'm not pleased with that 4, so I'm going to draw it again. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, so red box in it. That's the answer. Problem number 3 just like that. All right, next problem. Here we have it. 11 twelfths times 4 fifths. So here that is also a multiplication symbol, that big fat dot in the middle there. And of course, I'm going to try to simplify before I multiply. I'm trying to see if any of the numbers in the numerator have anything in common with any of the numbers in the denominator so I can reduce the problem before I multiply this out. So here I'm noticing that 4 and 12 can both be divided by 4. Yeah. So 4 goes into itself once, 4 goes into 12 three times, and then, that's right, multiply straight across. So you end up with 11 times 1, which is 11, and then 3 times 5 is 15, and that's the answer. Red box. Done. That was problem number 4, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right. Keep it moving. Problem number 5. I have 30 40 seconds times 12 21st. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to simplify before I multiply. Class, if you multiply these numbers straight across this 30 times 12, that 42 times 21, and then you're going to try to simplify, those numbers are going to be huge. 
really big so I'm trying to avoid that right now so I'm going to try to reduce this right now if I can and what I'm noticing is that in 30 and 42 these numbers can both be reduced by 6 so that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to say 6 goes into 30 5 times and that 6 goes into 42 7 times Next, I'll be checking to see if 12 can be reduced with any of the numbers, and it can. 12 and 21 can both be reduced by 3. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 3 goes into 21 7 times. So next, I'll just simply multiply straight across. So 5 times 4 gives me 20, and 7 times 7 gives me 49, and that's the answer. That's it. So 20 49 done and done. You got it. All right, that was problem number five. On to the next one. Look at what we have here. Now, remember I told you earlier that my first step is to check to see if I have two fractions multiplying. Well, here we got three fractions multiplying. So you can multiply all of these at the same time. Yes, you can. And my preference is to, once again, simplify as much as possible before I multiply. And that's even more the case when I'm dealing with multiple fractions, okay? So I'm going to start out by reducing the 11 and 22. It's just staring at me right now. So I know that 11 goes into itself once, and 11 goes into 22 twice. Mm -hmm. I also recognize that 5 will go into itself once. 5 goes into 15 three times. Yep. Also, that 2 will go into itself once, and 2 goes into 8 four times. I can do that. I can also say that 4 goes into itself once, and 4 goes into 44 11 times. So this is what I'm left with after I've simplified all three fractions. Remember, as long as any of the numbers in the numerator had something in common with any of the numbers in the denominator, you can reduce those fractions before you multiply. So I will be multiplying straight across. So help me out here. 1 times 1 gives me, that's right, 1, and then 1 times 1 is still 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 gives me 1. In the denominator, I have 1 times 11, which is 11, and then 11 times 3 is 33. You got it. Well, that's the end of the problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Done and done. That's problem number six. That does it for today's lesson on multiplying fractions, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate. We really appreciate it, and it helps us bring you more free math tutorials. Peace. Oh, Lord, there's so many kind of fractions. They got proper, improper, addings. Subtracting, multiplying, dividing, mixed numbers, LCD. Ooh, that's like my TV. Simplifying, and my favorite of all, your least common denominator. <laughs> <laughs>